Not every data analyst needs a project portfolio to share with future employers. Today we're looking at three reasons why you might not need a portfolio when you're applying for new jobs. I'm Jen and I demystify analytics skills and careers. I've worked in analytics for over 15 years as an analyst and a hiring manager. You can check out the video description for additional analytics resources. But for now, let's jump into those three reasons why you might not need a data analytics portfolio to demonstrate your skills. I fully expect that not everyone is going to agree with my take on analytics project portfolios. After all, even I've said in the past that connecting your skills and training to real world business examples is one of the key skills most new data analysts and business analysts lack when they're looking for a job. And I've also given examples of types of projects that will help you get jobs. So why am I now saying that there are three reasons why you might not need a portfolio? Because it's not a one size fits all answer. Let's be clear, I'm not saying that you don't need analytics projects to get a job, but what I'm saying is you might not need a visual portfolio that you can actually share with an employer. So let's look at those three reasons. The first reason that you might not need an analytics project portfolio to share is that you've done analytics in your job or your internship. If you've done data analytics work as part of your job, whether as a data analyst or a business analyst, or as a part of a job that had more than it entailed, you probably don't need an analytics portfolio. You have solid analytics content to talk about on your resume and in your interview. And it would be extremely rare in those cases that you would be able to share the specific business details of the project you worked on. You'll be able to talk in high level, you might even talk about perhaps models that you use, techniques, tactics, that you used, but you can't share the business data. The work you've done for another company is almost certainly going to be covered by some sort of confidentiality agreement, whether that's an NDA or some other sort of agreement. So you won't be going and putting all of the business ins and outs on your portfolio. You won't be taking a dashboard that you built for one company and sharing it with other companies. While you might not be able to get into the specifics and share all of the nitty gritty details, you can talk in general terms about it. You can talk about the types of models you use, the techniques, the tactics, maybe the scale of your data, certainly the impact that it had. Maybe some of the questions, what business challenge were you trying to solve? Those are perfect things to talk about, both on your resume and in your interview, but it's not something that you would want to share a digital copy of that full project with a future employer. Reason number two to skip the analytics project portfolio is if you can't explain the business impact. One of the real assets of great data analysts are being able to figure out the questions that need to be asked to address the business problems or challenges that the organization is facing. If you're not able to do this, then you're not really going to be able to connect those projects in a meaningful way to a company that wants to hire you to help solve their problems. While you might have great projects that show off fantastic technical skills, at the end of the day, if you don't know when to leverage these skills and how to ask the right questions, then you're not really going to be that effective in the job. You're really taking out the human value added creativity piece that good data analysts bring to the table. Too often I see portfolios that are full of exploratory projects. Someone picks a data set and then they ask, what can I learn from this data? That's not the reality of how most businesses operate in the analytics space though. Yes, they may sometimes do that exploratory, open-ended data analysis where they're saying, what can I learn? But most of the time they're saying, here's a problem I have, or here's a question I want to answer. How can I answer that with the data set? So if you're doing projects, feel free to start with exploratory analysis. Look at what's within your data set, what information that you might be able to gather, what you can learn from it, but then take the next step. Set up a business problem that your data could potentially answer and then solve for that, analyze for that. Be able to talk through that piece of the equation because that's where you start to see connection with the business, even if the 
the project that you did maybe wasn't part of a business or wasn't part of an internship. It was just you working with the data set you found. It also demonstrates your ability to identify the types of questions that businesses want answers to or problems they might be facing and then taking that step of figuring out how to solve them. The third reason to skip a project portfolio is if you're only showing examples of guided work. Guided projects are great and they're very typical of any style of learning analytics, whether you're learning it in a college setting or you're learning it from a, an online platform or you're completely self-studying with free resources. Regardless of which avenue you go down, a lot of people start with guided projects. They're a fantastic starting point. They help you walk step by step through all of the different aspects of solving an analytics challenge of answering a problem or question that a business might have. However, if that's all you do, then what it says to me if I am looking to hire an analyst is that you're going to need a lot of handholding. You might be able to technically execute well when you're told do A, B, C, D, E in that order, but can I hand you a project and say, all right, this is yours to work on? I am gonna be a little skeptical if all I see is guided work. So if that's all you're gonna show, skip the portfolio. It's not going to add a lot of value. The exception to this might be an internship. That would be a time where it would make sense to have more of that academic side of things. You haven't had a chance to fully connect because that's also part of what you're trying to learn in the internship. That's the value internships bring is getting some of that practical hands-on experience. We've gone through three reasons to skip an analytics project portfolio. Does all of this mean that you should completely skip data analytics projects? Of course not. They're always going to be of high value when talking about them on your resume and in your interviews. But those projects may not be a portfolio that you send someone a link to. They may be items that you did in your job that you're able to talk through or projects that you did that you're able to talk through. If none of your experience is actually in a work setting, then a project portfolio can be valuable if you follow the guidance I gave on things that do make it valuable. Don't waste your time creating a big portfolio of projects that aren't the type of projects that are going to get you hired. There's really not an added value for your time. You're not showing employers something of value. And if anything, it makes your skills look weaker than just talking about what you've learned. You do want to be able to make that connection. So be smart about how you look at projects and how you talk about demonstrating the experience you have. If you need help, perhaps one-on-one -on -one guidance, check out the video description for links to coaching with me. Thanks so much for watching.